You may be seated. Let's just dedicate this time to, to the Lord. Father, thank you for your presence where we bind two people together, but more than that, two families. We ask you for your wisdom and your leadership. In Jesus' name, amen. What a great honor for me to be here today, to bind these two together. Um, Rayal, you look absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful bride, beautiful everything. And um, okay, you, you, um, You're lucky. Let me say that. I was very excited when they asked me to do this, and it's a, it's a privilege for me to do this for them today. I know them a long time, for, at, at least for Brielle. I know that her a long time. And we had some serious discussion with Chase before the time. So he's um, committed, and I want to call everybody here today as witness to this relationship then you pray for them regularly and keep them in your mind all the time. I want to just read to you quickly. I'm not going to be long, but I want to read to you quickly a, f a few verses in, the, in Ephesians chapter 5. And I don't know why the Lord speaks to the woman first, but he says in verse 22, Wives, submit to your husband as do to the Lord. I thought I'll get a smile out of that from Jason. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, as the wife must respect her husband. I, d I, don't, I know you might not remember a lot, but thank God there's photography and they will tell you this. But there's five things quickly I want to mention to you as a success for your relationship. The first thing is this. Put Jesus right in the middle of your relationship. Never deny him first place. Acknowledge him in everything that you do. Secondly is this. I'll tell you what a woman needs. Two major needs. The one is she needs love. And she needs to be emotionally connected to you. That's your job to make that happen. Always. What a man needs is two things. One is respect, and the other one is acceptance. He always needs to feel accepted. If you do that, he will stay with you. He will have a lot, lot of man here for the rest of your life. The third thing is this, communication. Not just talk to one another, but also listen to one another. Very important listen to one another. Intimacy. Intimacy. See, sex would be fulfilling for both of you. Finances is number five. Finances is number five. Not how much money we make, but how we spend money. So see that you have a budget, then you never have to be the one that says she can't buy that bargain. It helps in marriage, let me tell you. I'm so excited to be with them today and also the example that they have they're going to have communion, and that's a fellowship meal that Jesus himself instituted. He said to his disciples before he went to heaven, let's have communion, let's talk to one another, let's have communion together. And for that reason, he took bread, and he broke it, and he says, take, eat, this is my body. 
as you remember that, remember the Lord in everything that you do. Break bread together. If you need healing in your body, break bread together. The Lord will be there to bless you and keep you. And then he took the cup. And this is just grape juice or wine or something. And he says, this cup represents the blood of Jesus that covers you with his blood. Take and drink and remember of the goodness of the Lord wherever you go. What a great example these two young people has for all of us here this afternoon to have, to have communion together. Oh, preacher needs to turn the page. I'm going to ask you something, and at the end I'm going to ask you what you, what you answer, okay? So don't answer in between. Chase, do you promise before God and all of us here present here to take Brielle to be your wife? Will you provide for her, protect her, and always love her till the day that you both have no more breath? What is your answer? I do. And Brielle, do you promise before God and all of us here present that you will take Chase to be your husband, that you will respect him, that you will care for him, that you will serve him and help him to be useful in the kingdom of God. What is your answer? I do. Can somebody give me the rings? What a great example of the love that they have for one, the purity of the metal, and also the ring as an unending circle of their love. Father, I bless these two rings that go on these fingers today. That is not just a symbol that we normally do, but that it's a representation of the connection that they have with one another. Chase, I ask you to take this ring and put it on her left ring finger as a commitment to Brielle and repeat this after me. Brielle, I love you and I honor you. Brielle, I love you and I honor you. I promise to be your husband. I promise to be your husband. To stay by your side. To stay by your side. To protect and provide for you. To protect and provide for you. Even in difficult times. Even in difficult times. Brielle, I want you to take this ring and put it on his left hand ring finger and as proof of your commitment to him and repeat after me. Say, Chase, I promise to be your wife. Chase, I promise to be your wife. To respect you. To respect you. To accept you. To accept you. As our leader. As our leader. To help you to serve the Lord. To help you to serve the Lord. And to love you even when things are tough. And to love you even when things are tough. There's just one more thing. I want you to repeat, both of you repeat after me. Says, don't ask me to leave you. Don't ask me to leave you. Or to turn away from you. Or to turn away from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. And your God will be my God. What a glorious time here in the presence of the Lord. It's very easy, very relaxing. You guys look awesome. And now, by the power and the authority invested in me by the Lord Jesus Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride.